Tell me, Chung, hello. Hello, Eric. Hello, Vlad. Good morning. I'm the chair today. Not, not voluntarily, oh, but, but, but Doug made me. <laughs> well, this will be interesting to have a different perspective on it at all. I'm <laughs> sure you look great. Thank hey, you. Clemens. Ooh, we have shiny and very crisp <laughs> screen sharing again. Oh, yes. And that is because I use Windows. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why that is.
I hope nobody ever takes me seriously when I praise the product of Microsoft. Uh, that I'm not involved in. To be fair, the Surface Book are awesome. Yeah, they are. I have the Surface 2, the Surface Book 2, and I'm super happy with it. Ainsley. Hi, Clemens. It's actually Ginger. That's just my computer. Oh, it's ginger. oh yeah, 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 Ginger. It's, I, it's, I have got it, to figure this out. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so I, think, uh, I think uh, Doug made the same mistake. Uh, yeah, see, it's now really it's, annoying. Now it's changed. You can rename it. So Zoom gives you the option to click on your name on the participants list and rename it. So that's what I have to do every time. <laughs> it's just annoying. Yes. Hello, Heinz. Hello, hello. Scott, Varun. Howdy. Hey. Vladimir. Good morning. Um, Matthias. Good morning. See, I know how to pronounce that. So I have to leave early today. That's that's okay. I think I think this will be relatively short because we don't have a lot of um, PRs. There's one ongoing discussion where I'm not sure that Alan is going to show up, but I can probably talk to it. Klaus is here. Hello. Um, and there's a there's someone with uh, on the phone. Nine two five six nine nine zero two seven seven. Good morning. This is John Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, as I said, as I said earlier, uh, Tam, um, Doug has asked me to uh, take over the chair for the day since he's out. And I was not in a position to say no. I'm just thrilled that you got here, Clemens, because otherwise I was like up on deck somewhere, like number three. <laughs> that, I would have been number two. <laughs> yes, that is true. And the only reason why that is so is that there was a, um, I was supposed to be on a flight in a Zeppelin, but the weather is bad, so they canceled it. So that's why. I'm, yeah, it's, but now I have the pleasure to spend time with you all, which is great. <laughs> Matthias, Matthias, you're doing all kinds of things there that allowed. Sorry. I think the rule is waiting until three minutes after the hour, so I will do that too. Gabrielle.
Daniel Barker. I'm here. Hello. Not Christoph. Hi. Hi. I find typing in front of so many people uh, frightening. Meanwhile, I should be doing more demos. Tim. Yeah, the demos at KubeCon were super fun. All right, so. If you click on Bear Burton and then uh, you can see, turn off print mode, and that'll collapse turn, your document. Turn off print mode. There's, I, I, I can, I, I barely, so I, I don't think I'm even editor in this thing, so I can probably make a proposal and then someone has to go and accept it, and I don't want to break proposal. anything. <laughs> I, I I'm just I'm just gonna go and make annotations in this document, which will later be accepted by by someone, and then hopefully I don't break anything. All right, so, um, but I hope you can see. Um, so Doug uh, is out right now. Um, I'm not sure what he what he's doing, um, but uh, he asked me that I take over um, the uh, the call. Uh, for this week and I think next week is someone else who um, is doing the call so um, I think it's going to be relatively quick because we don't have a lot of um, PRs and we have a few issues um, and then there's going to be the SDK call is going to be afterwards but so question community time anybody have anything of um, importance to raise That is not the case. Um, the SDK subgroup is going to uh, meet after this call um, and probably within this hour if we're quick enough. Um, about the incubator proposal, I don't know. I don't know what the status is of there. Um, neither do I have insight into the KubeCon proceedings. And so we should um, proceed to. Uh, PRs and issues. There is Tim provided an update for the. This is relatively new. Did did you just add, did anyone just add that? I I added it. It uh, seems to be just a correction for of an example. So I thought it might be ah. true. Ah, let's go and let's go and take a look at this because I've seen it. And you just. Okay, so you just added this an hour ago. So formally, that's too late, but I think- um, Yes, but is I think we up. usually uh, wave through um, PRs that are just um, corrections exactly. of some yes. text. Yes, we do. So uh, change here, do you wanna talk about it? Do you wanna say what you fixed? Oh, I, I just added it to the document because I thought it might be discussed today. I'm not the one who uh, created it. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't know if Tim is in the call, so. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm so misunderstood. Um, he might not be, okay. So, um, but I had commented on this. Um, it's relatively easy. Um, we have effectively a leftover in the Avro document is that data is represented as base 64, which is senseless in, um, in, uh, in Avro because Avro understands bytes. So um, it, um, it just changes that to something that makes more sense. Now we can make this a little bit more complicated, um, but um, that's what the correction is. I would not take this right now and I would still comment because data content type, this should be data content type and I would probably go and prefer if this was not using the content type at all, but would use it something that's, that the data field would have a simple value. So I would, I think it's a patch that we should take um, personally but I would not take that right now. 
comments. No, it's been too late. So let's go and take this ne next week. Um, so that was the, that's the only PR I think that's in the list. Let's go and take a look at the list per se. Um, I don't think there's anything that's, this is a new one. Um, this one is, is one that we're gonna talk about in the SDK call. Um, and this has been discussed, but Alan is not here to defend it. Um, but let's take a look at this briefly. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So what this, so Alan is not here, unfortunately, but I've been in that discussion. So let me, let me try to explain that. Um, effectively, we have not made clear that the context, that all context attributes need to be of the, the in, inside the type system. And uh, Alan has been concerned because that is um, missing, specifically for extensions um, that would um, um, cause interoperability issues. So this is effectively tighten up, tightening up that text. Um, that's the goal of this. And um, then uh, he also clarifies, and that's something that I've been, that has been, I think, expli implicitly clear um, that we have this canonical string representation and we must be able to um, convert to and from it. Um, and so he's now adding this text. So I think the rule, the the thing, I think the rule that he wants to add here is effectively the extension attributes um, must also adhere to that rule. That extension attributes specifically also must follow the canonical string encoding um, to avoid ambiguity with other string encodings. I don't I, personally, I don't have a strong feeling about this. Comments? Anybody has thought about thoughts about this? Does anybody think that this text is uh, improving on what we have or helps with interoperability better? Christoph? I don't see so much what it adds, to be honest, but it doesn't make things worse, I guess. So I don't really have an opinion. Scott. Extension attribute, you might not know oh. what type it's supposed to be, right? I mean, not... yeah, that's correct. So the the I think I think the journey of an extension attribute is that it may start out as a native integer in um, in AQP, and then if it gets if it gets reserialized on on a in, on a route, um, it may hit a transport where or format where it must be represented as a string. Um, and then it gets turned from the native representation into the string representation and it stays that way. And so what, what, bad, th what bad thing would this language prevent happening? Because I, I can't think of any. Yeah, neither can I. Because I don't, I think possibly uh, maybe the, the conical form is the the type that's safe to go into headers versus what's acceptable to go into JSON versus mm -hmm. something else, non um, non escaped string poten potentially. It's 
So let's let's see what what he fixes five oh eight. So, so I think his point, his point was in the beginning, as we started this discussion, is that um, interoperability is impossible because um, the uh, extension is not the extent. The extensions are not to, not defined to be within the type system, and I think that's the 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 goal of the fix is to make sure that they are, um, and I think that's the that's the objection that he has. But I. Since extensions are just context, attri context attributes, uh, I'm not sure that that's true. Okay. Once again, it would really help if somebody could explain the problem as fixes and how it fixes it. Yeah. Um, I would say we're going to table this one. Because I think Alan needs to come. If Alan cares uh, about this um, more than we seem to seem to, then he needs to come and defend it. Agree. I think the first line kind of makes sense. The first chains or context attributes must be one of the type listed. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it already says that, but yes, but the rest, I he really needs to go and explain it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I have no problem with this, but let's go and make this part of the the review the next for next week. Um, Perhaps someone could make a comment on the PR asking for clarity of what's being fixed. That'd be great if someone could do this. So let's. Um... Wow, how do I do that now? Oh, the. Link to his PR is already lower in the document, actually. What is it? In oh, the okay. next page. Oh, all right, great. Um, yes. Can I ask for... And that's also from Alan. That's another thing which is somewhat unfortunate that he's not here. Yeah, since we got rid of data content encoding, Oh, okay, so that's already closed. Okay, sorry, I didn't even notice that. Closed. I had, a, I had a question about data content encoding. Yeah. If, let's say you're trying to translate uh, a, an HTTP structured encoded message into a binary encoded message, would you expect for, for the body to be base64 encoded and then have the normal header set or or is that not a concern like uh, should if you, preserve that uh, for that translation if you go from what from structure to binary yes if you, you go, go from, from structure with a data base 64 um, that goes via the so it's a binary and it's treated as a binary, which means that database 64 goes as binary into the entity body of the HTTP request.
uh, keep it, do you keep it base 64 or do you? Uh, no, you read it. So, so basics, we have now made base 64 a, a feature of JSON. So underscore base 64 is a, is a feature of the JSON binding, which means as if you read it in, um, a, a underscore base 64 is effectively a flag. It, it's, a, it's an attribute, if you will, on the data um, field that says um, this here is JSON and this is JSON string, but you ought to treat it as a binary. So you read it in and it becomes a binary in your in-memory structure, whatever you use. And you just, if you turn that in-memory structure back into an HTTP request, well, then you just serialize the binary out as binary. So the base 64 goes away as you're, as you're, um, uh, as you're deserializing as the, uh, the, uh, the event. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, so let's go and take a look at issues that were open. There's a, there's one issue that's also raised by Alan, which makes it even sadder that he's not here. Um, And that comes from, so this is the issue from Tim that Tim is trying to fix with that PR. Um, and now we have effectively two things which are um, related, the inconsistency integer type mapping for um, MPP. Um, we explicitly define our integers as having 32 bit range, um, which I'm gonna go and uh, we're gonna take a look at that in a second. Um, but the MQP spec maps to AMQP long, and that is 64-bit long. So um, arguably, the AMQP mapping is too wide um, in numbers in terms of numbers and bits. Um, and then, and here, um, and then Alan raises this, says because we're now going to 1.0, he just want to make, wants to make sure that that we're addressing this. Um, the C spec uses 32 bits for integers. So those two things are related. If we make the, 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 the range bigger then the mismatch with H MQP is gone. Um, so he's, he's, uh, he's like, shall we make this 64 bits? So let's take a look at that briefly. Here is that. So I think what's being raised here is the question of, um, since we're not talking about bits here, we're, we're well, actually we say this is within the range of assigned 32 bit, um, that 30 bit integer. Uh, whether we shall expand that to 64 bits, um, whether, whether we shall leave that at, at 32. Does anybody uh, have any feelings? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would probably be dangerous to extend them to 64 bits because a very high proportion of the data shuffling back and forth around the internet is in JSON. And in JSON, the only thing you can expect to be interoperable is 64 bit floats, which means you really only have 53 bits of integer. <laughs> um, and essentially, if you require it to support 64 bits, that means you probably can't transmit it in JSON unless you encode it as a string, which is icky. Tim, I would like to go, go on a world tour with you and start eliminating JSON from the internet, but yeah, I, it's probably not going to happen. I like JSON. I wouldn't do that. No? Well, okay. I think it's terrible. Um, Anyhow, you can't how, really have 64-bit integers if JSON is a first-class citizen. That is, that is the truth. Um, anybody, have, anybody have dissenting opinions? I think before 1.0, we should make, or we should minimize the amount of such changes. So I think we should stick to 32 bit. I agree. So, um, um, I am not sure how to, uh, in the call, I'm, I, I don't know how to add links to that thing. Hang on, maybe I can. Uh, issues. Oh, let's do this like this. Uh, 
to oops, sixty four bit to first key because of timing and JSON support for numbers. Okay, and then and then I. Um, I don't think the mapping to NQP long hurts because NQP is actually pretty clever about um, um, how it encodes things. So if the number is short, the, the, the encoding will be shorter. So, and, and that's mostly between Alan and me, I would say for the, <laughs> for the NQP mapping. Um, so I don't have any problems with the, with the issue that he raised there. So let's go and also make a comment on this one. Unless someone wants to speak up for in favor of of clipping that to to an end. Um, anybody wants to speak up in favor of any of the issues that are that are that are here? No. No. Good. Well, well just a formal question: Is this yes. integer mapping thing somehow a v one version one issue? Well, the I think bytes, bits, bit with bit sizes are um, something that that's a decision that's pretty heavy in terms of um, you know back and forth, back and forth compatibility. You can always go longer, but you can't really go shorter. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's a that's a thing that Alan raised specifically, and he called that out. He said um, this is something we should just go discuss. Um, before we go v1, and I think we just did that. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to raise? No. Good. Well, then. Um, then I have a few people that I think we're, we're done then. Um, there will be an SDK call right after this. If everybody is here for the SDK call, which it kind of seems like we can start that right away after that. Otherwise, I wish you a um, great day. Christian Laxina has joined. Hello. You got my name right. Thank you. Hello. Um, well, actually, uh, yeah. And then um, uh, Alvin, I've seen, and these are. This is, I think this is everybody who I've captured. All right. Um, I think that's it. So um, thank you very much for showing up. And uh, the next meeting, uh, we'll have a few people missing um, because there's a, there's a holiday in Germany and Doug is not going to be here, uh, but we still have business to close out. So um, uh, you should nevertheless um, show up even though some of us aren't, are not. Um, and that's it. SDK, SDK folks, just stay on the line, I would say. Or if you insist that we do this in half an hour, we can do that too. I have to say these calls feel a lot less, a lot more formal when I'm not running them.
And that's not and that's not because of Doug, but that's mostly because of the, the, the missing separation between, you know, writing and talking. Did Doug give you his gavel? No, he actually contacted me over um, uh, over Slack and said, you're going to do it. Well, no, he didn't. He asked so nicely that I couldn't say no. So there is no gavel here. All right. Scott. So do we feel we need to wait until until uh, um, until the top of the hour? Or do we have everybody we need? I think I think we have the crew. I think so too. Great. So um, Scott, I have so I have now done the homework and I've lit I've I've read through your amendments for the SDK document. I'm sitting down. And I have to say, I have nothing, I have no objections. I think this is good. Oh. <laughs> are, you, are you feeling okay? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, there's, <laughs> I think that I think that's fine. That's the pretty that's the pretty view. Now let's see what does the what does the red mean? What does the green mean? I, I think yellow is a diff, red is deleted, and green is yeah I added. Exactly. So, so I, I, I didn't I don't disagree with what you wrote. I just feel like it it's hard to be this prescriptive for every language that we may want to use for cloud events. Yeah, and and I so I've done I've done a little bit of of go exercises uh, exercising um, between oh. when I well you know um, because uh, we uh, I, my my scope in at work is growing a little bit so I need to be uh, while I will not gain proficiency probably I should be able to grow and read the, read the code well. And uh, so I've been taking some courses, etc. So I now understand better where you're coming from. Um, and uh, so that it's definitely a, a slightly uncomfortable from like a the Java world, where everything needs to have setters and getters, and you're like, what do you mean I can just reach down in and modify stuff? It, it's it's a language. So the the. My, my, uh, since I've, I mean, I've been cursory, I've been reading Go code for a while, obviously, but now I've actually went in and did the, the, um, you know, a proper course in it. And, um, it's clear that this is the, the, the revenge of the C people for C++. Um, that, that's what it looks like to me. And it, so it's, it's, uh, it has a lot of, it's very C-like. Uh, in the original sense of like the unpolluted, uh, um, you know, original sense of C in, in a way um, with lots and lots and lots of modern elements and more safety, but it clearly has a very C feeling to it. Like from when I first learned C, that seems like a very natural upgrade path, um, also from my mindset perspective, et cetera, and kind of fixing all the problems that C had without going through the terrible, horrible thicket of um, uh, barbed wire that is C++. Yeah, there's a Twitter joke right now. Uh, people are looking at making Go++. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I actually have, I've been working on the SDK this week. Uh, I've done several PRs and I now can produce most of two, uh, the 1.0 spec. Uh, but sorry, I'm getting distracted. So reword the SDK. Looks good. Sure. Let's, let's merge it. It's great. Yeah. I, I would, uh, for me, that's fine. That's fine as it is. Um, and does anybody, I don't know, does anybody else have opinions about this? Did anybody else read it?
All right, does anybody object to merging this? No. Well, that's good. Then I, I think in drafting this, I I realized that the Golang SDK uh, needs to have some adjustments, which Alan and I are actively working on. Okay, great. So recorded that. Um, let's go back here. Because I think that's in, in terms of like SDK related documents, that's the last thing that we have, right? So we're gonna go and take do this and I'm gonna take mine. Let's go I'm gonna do that immediately. I'm gonna close that one. Good. So so amongst the coders, um, do we think do we think we should um, like do a um, cross SDK code review efforts? How do we think about that? I, I would love to know how other people are um, having like what the what the experience upgrading to one O has been. Are there any other active developers that are working on SDKs? I know Clemens, you've done this. Yes, I've done this. Um, it's been, uh, so for me, it's been uh, uh, fairly uneventful, except that I've, so I've been doing a bunch, a bunch of conditionals um, around some constructs because we made, we, so we didn't, didn't make, we didn't, we made some changes towards three, 0 0.3. Uh, that were structural and then we started cutting the map support um now towards 1.0 and i think that was the biggest significant change and then we had also rules around simplifications around data content type etc um but i didn't have anything that's that really stuck out as a giant issue what i'm doing in my what i've been doing in my sd in, in the SDKs basically allow for um, for in the in the in the um, um, oh, in the strongly typed in the strongly type representation of the event um, there I'm effectively tracking the latest version um, and that's what you need to program against and if you want to go and this is kind of towards 1.0 um, you know, you, you pick the SDK and the SDK has a particular version that it, it is biased towards and you take those bits and use those. Um, the, the internal core, so I have this, this class called the cloud events attributes, and that's the thing that does the serialization and does the validation. That thing just operates on a dictionary and that, that thing then gets kind of loaded up, if you will, by the, by the strongly typed shim that's around it. Um, so I've been doing like all most of the upgrade work happened in there and I didn't find Yeah, for me that wasn't very complicated. It was mostly just it was a cutting code um, in, in the sense of you know Stashing it away if it's not 1.0 rather than um, um, Rather than uh, uh, making anything more complicated. So I think we've been doing some simplification some simplification work here which um, which has which is helping I actually found a, uh, so it, in the primer, there's a, there's language that says the specification places no restrictions on the type of extension attributes, meaning they may, may be simple types, strings and integers, complex, structured, or uh, undefined collection of attributes. How about, how about you, you file a PR to go and fix that? Yeah, I've, I've been highlighting things that I need to follow up on. So I have several things that I've found that are slightly inconsistent, but I'm, this this is incorrect, right? Like we don't allow multi-level extensions into the payload anymore. Or sorry, not the payload, the, the attributes. I can't say like foo dot bar dot baz is a string. No, you can't. And and that's the the I think that's a leftover. So this pri I don't think anybody has has paid as close attention to the primer as we should. Yeah. And I think the primer is also a document where. Um, 
um, that is the most patchwork. So one of the things for next week, um, I think, is um, look at, so we've, we're within the two week period, I think where we all said that we wanna go and, and take a look, closer look at documents. Um, so basically out of the development experience, it would be great to go and make a, uh, take a pass through the primer specifically um, and see where there's stuff that needs to be patched up. And it could be that there's even, um, uh, you know, duplication between paragraphs or that, you know, one paragraph doesn't really flow with another, with another one. So doing some editorial patches there would be, would probably be helpful. And the primer is the document that is not normative, but it's really just the explanation. And if there's stuff that is just wrong because we've made changes and nobody cared to track them in the primer, um, then we should go and correct that. That's, that's the primer is a document also that we can probably uh, keep revising and clarifying uh, beyond V1 because that's not, I don't think that, I don't think of that, of that document as versioned. The, as far as the spec goes, the only inconsistency I found is there is a must in attribute naming convention. It says attributes must begin with a lower case letter, but they also say that uh, they're case insensitive. Yeah, I think the I, th I think the rule the rule is that they all need to be lowercase. I think that's what we agreed on. So that let's let's go and find that. Oh, I see. So it's uh, don't use uppercase letters. Use don't use uppercase at all, because we had this we had this um, we had a debate about this, and. Because you already get a, get an issue with uh, you know permitted. Um, where were we? Do, 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 do. What was the naming convention? Yes. Uh, must consist of lowercase letters and digits. Must begin with a lowercase letter. Arguably, we can delete because that's implied. Yeah. And my one other thing is I, so I've been calling, you know, like HTTP and uh, AMQP and NAT things transports, but the spec mm -hmm. calls them protocol. But I think it mixes the, the terminology between transports and protocols and transport particle bindings and things like that. Which, which is the preferred n word to use? Because I, I want to change things in my side. Um, if you... If you aim for perfection, then I think those are application. The things we have bindings to are all application protocols. Because the, the transport underneath is where, you know, TCP or UDP or Quick, um, and then we, we, we really map to, app pro, to application protocols. They're not really transports. Um, that's the purity of it, but then, um, what they do for us is they obviously act as transports. So, um, um, I, I will say in that case, I, I will say in that case that I'm probably too um, deep in that terminology hole that I can probably not see clearly what works better for uh, the normal people. And um, so I'm not going to take a, take a position on that. Why well, I'm trying to get the SDK language to be as close to the spec as possible. So I think I'm going to rename everything to protocols and not transports. Yeah, protocol binding. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still working through it. I think I've, I, you know, I've, there's a lot of, I'm doing a bunch of casing too, but it's, it's to uh, avoid complicated logic paths because we've simplified a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. Hi everybody. Sorry I'm late. I didn't have the time for this meeting in my calendar. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hello, Clemens.
Remember me? <laughs> is that me or is that him? Oh, no, sorry, carry on. I'm no need to. Alan's talking to you, Clemens. Yes. Oh, wait. I have not, I have not, uh, uh, sorry, I had some, I had some uh, network issues or I'm having network issues, oddly, even though this is my house. Um, Alan, hello. My wife is always complaining about the network and she's using our house. <laughs> yeah, we well, that's know so much about this networking stuff. You're always bloody breaking it. <laughs> so Alan, we had, um, uh, what, what did you tell me? Well, sorry, I couldn't I was, leave. I was just saying hello. Oh, okay. Uh, we, um, it would have been great if you had been here 45 minutes ago um, because we had, your, we had your PRs on the table, or sorry, your issues on the table in terms of um, uh, bitness of integer. Yes. And so Tim Bray said, well, we can't expand it to, we can't expand to 64 bit because of the width of JSON which is something that you, I think you also mentioned. Well, yeah, it's kind of, that was kind of the opposite argument. I don't really feel strongly about it. I just thought we should make sure we haven't done it, made a mistake before we go to press. The width of JSON in practice, JSON doesn't specify any width, but in practice, it's the width of the integer part of an IEEE 64-bit float, which is about 52 bits. Yes, Tim, Tim mentioned, that, mentioned that exactly. Um, so that's why we didn't take that. And for AMQP, and so the AMQP issue, that we also talked about that. Um, it, since an AMQP long actually encodes into uh, whatever bits you need, ultimately, because of the, the way how the type system works in AMQP, I no, don't care. Doesn't. I mean, there's, there's, there's separate wire types. There's a, there's a short for 16 and in for 32 and a long for 64. No, no, but there's a but but the long actually has a short has two short representations. Like it actually looks at the value and then picks a subtype that then has the appropriate length. Oh yeah, and has a zero special case and all that weird stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it has I mean, all that. The, the 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 long is the long is certainly able to do everything it needs to be. It's just that it's 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 the int would do just as well. Uh, yes, but I I so I don't care. Yeah, well, okay, neither do I then. Good. If you consider it not cared then, and we'll just have to add integer 64 later if we have to. Yes. Um, because I don't think that hurts at all. Um, good. So we... Did I get disconnected or did Clemens suddenly stop talking? I think Clemens dropped for a second. Ah, uh, yes, his household network issue. Oh, wow. Maybe it's your video upload speed is not having good times. Oh, that is because Alan joined and Alan has the video on and that's why I'm, that's why I'm getting screwed here because I'm, I'm not sure Sorry, what's I'll, wrong. I'll hide myself then. That's less fun though. Uh, okay. Anyone else want to speak up? Non C sharp or Golang SDK authors? No, no. Are we concerned that the, there's not progress on the other SDKs? I am somewhat concerned, I have to say, if, uh, if progress is slow. People behind me that are getting nervous. Um, I, I think, I think um, product implementation will help there. So if um, I can assure you that we will go and, and ship product with cloud events. And it, from what I, what I hear Tim telegraphing, it seems like they're going to do cloud events too. 
Um, and I think that problem would solve itself. The question is um, whether that's going to be the official SDK. For our, for what we are going to do in C Sharp, um, it looks like my engineering team is actually looking at using the um, this SDK as the core, which is a good which is a good thing because then they will uh, take ownership of it because they hate whenever I write code. Um, and so we're probably going to build on top of the the official SDK for our for our purposes. And um, I would assume that um, in in your world, Scott, um, that's going to be similar. Um, and I think for other languages, for other languages, I mean, we have a we have a, a specification that people can build to. Um, and what we've created is reasonably compatible with with existing stacks that people have. So that like if you want to send an, an, an a binary event you need nothing but a regular HTTP client, right? That's all you need. And that was kind of a, one of the design goals. Um, and you can get pretty far with just having a, um, you know, JSON encoder and HTTP client, which means you probably don't necessarily need to have the SDK for simple cases. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned because I think we kept the spec easy enough so that it's fairly approachable from you know, standard um, clients so I'm not too concerned about scenarios with J JavaScript and TypeScript and the, the type of those languages. For something that's more a little more sophisticated than C Sharp, um, uh, Java, and, um, and Go, and the expectations that developers have, you know, strongly typed experience, et cetera, et cetera, um, that's more important. And, um, I haven't looked at the Java, at the Java um, state of the world of the Java SDK. I haven't either, and that's that's one that I'd be keep getting asked about. Yeah, and that's understandably so. Do do we know do we know who owns that? I've, uh, ah, Matthias. I've, my, oh, Matthias does. Um, then we should then we should uh, start. We should probably nag and see um, um, how we can get some, a little bit more more traction on that. And then probably. The next one is uh, JavaScript, because there's a lot of JavaScript devs. Yeah. Yes. So um, let's go and start filing issues and uh, and assigning those to people. I think say, hey, where how is this going? Okay, sounds good. I think that's all I have on my side. Great. Fabulous. Then I will not keep you longer if there's no other business uh, anybody cares about. And uh, you will all meet uh, next week in uh, here. Well, I'll, uh, me and the other Germans and Doug will not be here. Until then. All right. All right then. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone.